Hi everyone, this is Clemmy Games and welcome to the Indie Game Backlog. This week, we will be taking a look at Chroma Squad, a turn-based tactics game that channels the Power Rangers, developed by Behold Studios and released on Steam in April 2015. Growing up, the Power Rangers was a large part of my childhood and I do have fond memories of the series, especially the original run and the original team. In a previous series on this channel, I covered the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie The Game, which I will link on the screen now, and as a result, came to know of and fell in love with Chroma Squad, which I picked up in the recent Humble Gems bundle on HumbleBundle.com. In Chroma Squad, you play as the manager of a team of stuntmen who decided to go independent and to begin filming their own Sentai series rather than work for their previous director, Mr. Soap. I really enjoyed the presentation of the game, ensuring that the members are actually actors on the set, which allowed for some nice touches in the writing and the overall setup. The core game here revolves around turn-based combat, in which you control your group of rangers and have to battle enemy minions and bosses. Additionally, each scene has director's instructions, which are mini objectives that you have to complete in exchange for a reward of a larger audience. Individual rangers have their default hand-to-hand -hand combat, but can also be equipped with weapons such as swords, spears, and bows, which are on a cooldown after being used. Rangers also have active and passive abilities such as healing team members, stunning all enemies in a radius, or gaining additional viewers per square of movement. In each turn, each ranger has up to two possible actions that they can take, which is reduced to one if the ranger attacks. If the ranger does not, simply moving to one spot gives you the option of moving further, indicated by the purple squares, or to go into teamwork mode. With one ranger doing so, the other rangers can make use of the first to move further through teamwork acrobatics, or to do additional damage through team attacks if both are standing adjacent to an enemy. Furthermore, having all 5 rangers combining to perform a team attack results in a finishing move titled Chroma Power by default, which is accompanied by a nice little animation. The combat system here does really capture the spirit of the TV series and is excellent because of that. In addition to the tactical part of it, at the end of the first season of filming, I unlocked the Megazord equivalent in this game, and that segment was more akin to a push-your-luck, turn-based combat system. While not exactly my favourite type of mechanic in games, playing as the Zord was pretty awesome, and it added some variety into the gameplay. The mech could also be upgraded in various ways, which could potentially be more interesting the more I play. In between recording episodes, you have to manage your studio operations, including replying to email messages from marketing firms, fan mail, and even threats from your former employer. You have access to a shop where you can buy additional props for your actors, a crafting menu in which materials dropped from enemies can be used to craft new props, a marketing page in which you have to manage your choice of agency, as well as the various perks, a tab to manage your actor's equipment and skills, and most importantly, a studio tab. Here, you can purchase various upgrades such as additional studio lights, health insurance, microphone upgrades, etc., all of which confer benefits to your setup. You can customize things such as the name of your studio, the name of your team, the catchphrase, and the name of the special team attack, which allows for greater attachment to your characters. Speaking of characters, at the start of the game, you are able to customize your team, which will then be fixed for the duration of the game. This includes choosing individual actors, some of which are based on Kickstarter backers, and even customizing the color of your team members. Although being a fan of the original, I stuck with the default color scheme. Finally, I wanted to touch briefly upon the writing, design, and music in this game. I really enjoyed the writing, as it often referred to characters as actual people and actors rather than fictionalized ones. One example is when one of my team members had a dental appointment and had to leave after filming one scene, and the rest of the team 
use that opportunity to write the story as that character being kidnapped by the villain. Furthermore, the bosses were really well designed and their introductions often make me smile. Examples here include the boxing box, basically an actor in a cardboard box with boxing gloves on, as well as the transit mancer, a villain wearing a traffic cone and wielding a traffic light. The chip tuney music is also really appropriate for the art style, and the little tunes do resemble or are inspired by the heroic chimes of the TV show. All of these combined with the core tactical gameplay made for a fantastic experience. Anyway, that will do it for this video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe, leave a comment if you like. Thanks again and I will see you in the next video.